Hi, Adam Bazalgett here, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. Today, a product review, Super Speed Training Clubs. Tell you a secret about these, dozens and dozens of tour pros use these to build speed, and Super Speed doesn't pay a single one of them. They pay no royalties to anybody to use these. Show you level one protocol, a training course they'd like to put you through if you get a hold of this set. Really pretty interesting stuff, how you can build speed. And just bear in mind, when we train for speed as fast as we can, we're not suggesting you then try to swing as fast as you can when you play golf, but you will find training for it brings your average regular swing speed up. Let's check it out. Very briefly, if you're new to the channel, would love it if you'd subscribe. If you do so, hit the bell. You'd be notified every time a brand new video is coming your way. Also at the App Store, Scratch Golf Academy. You have a wonderful app with all sorts of training tools. It's free to you. Hope you'll check it out. Well, studies show clearly that unless you train for speed, whether you're throwing a baseball or swinging a golf club, in other words, unless you experience high speed within your body, you won't be able to repeat it. And that's what these are all about, and the varying weights are the key. The green is the lightest. It's about 20% lighter than your driver. Blue is the next lightest, 10% lighter than your driver. The red, 5% heavier with your driver. Get max speed at the light weight, and you work into it, and fight for getting the most speed you can at the slightly heavier weight. Now, I'm not much for weightlifting. You could probably tell that from looking at me, but I'm telling you, even I know that unless you fight for it a little bit, you're not really going to see great gains. Now, for the ladies, they have a yellow club that then goes to green and blue, so they're a slightly lighter set, trading out the red at one end for the yellow at the other end. Now, I know the guys at Super Speed Training Golf. I'm not on their payroll or anything, but this is a great product, so they've put a link below there. Link below the video here. If, you, if you're interested as you watch the video, you can get a discount there in the link below. Okay, three to five, three times a week is what you want to train for this first protocol, at least a day's break in between. The first protocol lasts five weeks. You can do this stuff at home. It won't take long, as I'll show you. It will make a big difference. I suggest you measure your driver speed on a launch monitor at the beginning and again at the end of the five-week protocol. So let's begin protocol one. I'm going to take the lightest club, that's the green club. A couple of words of caution here. Stretch, loosen out. Be ready for this. You're trying to swing as hard as you can. Don't get in there cold. Second thing, this doesn't have a club head. It wouldn't hurt you to hit the ground, but swing it above the ground a few inches. That's the goal. So green, this is my lightest club. This is the one I should most easily be able to find speed with. Three swings as hard as I can muster. Now what I'm going to do then is turn around, reverse my grip to a left, in my case a left-hander's grip. And the reason for doing this part of the protocol is it helps build coordination, number one. You'll find it's a little awkward at first if you're a right-handed golfer doing it left-handed or the other way around, but you'll start to build coordination and it will help you on both sides. It also balances out the physical training aspect and really helps that way. So the next thing, Three swings as fast as I could with that. I would go straight to the blue one. This is 10% lighter than your driver. Again, three swings as fast as I can right-handed, three swings as quickly and fast as I can left-handed. Then I take a break, 60 to 90 seconds. Let's check that out. Got a pretty interesting Ben Hogan story coming up for you at the end of this video, if you want to stick around for that. From the horse's mouth, not Ben Hogan to me, but someone that knew him very well told me this. Pretty interesting. Red, this is our heaviest club, so I'm going to have to really work for it. And I'm going to try to get three swings again from each side of the ball, right hand, left handed, with maximum, maximum speed. Now, the next level of the protocol, I'm just not going to go through the entire thing so you, you could get the picture. The next level, we're going to do, if you've ever watched the movie Happy Gilmore, we're going to do step together, step through, and absolutely max out speed. Same thing, right handed, left handed, green, blue to red. And you're going to find you can create a little bit more speed still when you do this drill. A little tricky when you go the other side of the ball and try it the, the non-dominant hand for you, but again, you'll build coordination. So let's try one more here. I can really max the speed out. Great stuff. The end of the protocol, once you've gone through that, get the lightest one, the green one, and then absolutely go for it with a regular stance. Final three swings just from the dominant side as fast as you can get it to go. That's your protocol training one. 
Well, there's several aspects to hitting the ball farther. Good technique, no question, is probably number one. It's personal fitness, flexibility, number two, certainly club fitting. You want to have a driver that's fit for you properly if you're going to maximize distance. But if you're missing out on speed training, you are shorting yourself. You'll not get the most out of it. So that Ben Hogan story, fellow that was the pro for 25, 30 years at Shady Oaks in Fort Worth, Texas. That was the club Hogan was a member at later in his life, the second half of his life. Had known Ben Hogan for a couple of decades. He said in the back of the clubhouse there was a large banquet room seldom used and there was a stairwell that went up with a large space underneath it. Again, people rarely back there and Hogan would frequently go back there with his driver and he said I tried not to spy on him too much but I'd look back there sometimes and see him working on it and making some swings. And he said the thing I remember though is at times he would ramp it up and he would make five or six or seven swings at such speed the wind noise coming off that club was remarkable. You could tell he ramped it all the way up then he'd come back down and swing a bit slower. Obviously Hogan's really a golf genius. He's someone we all look up to and should do. Somehow or other he had realized that this speed training was important. He was doing it long before the super speed training sticks or any of this other stuff came along. Hope this helps you. Hope you'll considering consider getting a set. Best of luck to you.